Hey everyone and welcome back to the news. Today it's a pretty great story actually because I think we could have a major new player in the gaming space. So Splitgate, a bit of a surprise hit, an incredible success in terms of the player counts and all of that, and all of that for a team that I'm pretty sure was numbering in and around the 20s. And where we last left off, they had done pretty well. They did secure some extra investment to grow the game, but now they have secured a lot of extra investment. It is honestly, it is extremely impressive what they've done. This could go in interesting ways. And when we're seeing a team that has found this much success in spite of their smaller size, I mean, what's going to happen when they scale? Yes, it could go not in the right direction, but if it goes in the right direction, then we could have a major player in the core gaming space. And I think this is a genuinely exciting thing for all of us. I certainly know I've been having a lot of fun in Splitgate. So to get into it, here's a message from their CEO, Ian, who said, I've read a lot of the tweets from the community and I'm happy to confirm that we are not selling our company to one of the big guns. Instead, I'm thrilled to announce we have solidified our future as an independent community first game studio. We have just closed a significant funding round of $100 million. It's a lot of dollars. One comment on Twitter was that your hope is that this announcement will be good for the team and good for the community, and that is exactly what this means. This means we can hire a lot more developers, which in turn means we can implement better and more frequent updates to Splitgate. We can add more features that, as always, originate from community feedback. We can fix bugs faster. We can support much larger numbers of players. We can come to more platforms. Everything is now on the table, and the scope of what we can achieve just got 10 times bigger. Our small team has accomplished a lot with Little, and we are excited to show you what we can do with more firepower. The focus over the coming months will be on growing to become the next big AAA studio while staying true to our roots as an indie team that prioritizes our community. We truly are just getting started, and we can't wait to show you everything we have planned. And then they talk a little bit about um, Splitgate coming out of beta and moving to uh, version 1. So there you go. That's the good news. There's going to be better news, though. Well, potentially, as we go through this. One of the things that got me really excited. So, yes, that's $100 million in. They have now raised more than $120 million in the space of three months since Splitgate really popped off. And this latest round actually has the studio valued at $1.5 billion. And I think what that is basically showing is, okay, this team of 20-something have just went and competed with Halo. That's really what this is saying. I mean, that's a massive valuation. And the game is still in beta, right? A beta that was actually so popular, they pushed the release back uh, you know, back to August and then announced that uh, it's actually just going to be in beta for the foreseeable future as they work on you know, server capacity and other improvements. It's been downloaded over 13 million times. Three of those were me. I literally <laughs> have played this game on every platform um, because I just play it whatever things in front of me and I really, really like it. Uh, yeah, so they say the funding will let them, you know, build out, do all of those things. And here's where it gets uh, quite interesting. Build out its complete vision for Splitgate as a top-tier AAA competitive shooter and begin to implement the studio's larger vision for establishing itself as a leading creative force of distinct and inventive IPs in the gaming space, where their long-term vision is to bring about an era of new classic games. And this includes examining genres where innovation is currently stalled by providing transformative new takes in well-known, globally recognized gaming genres. And this is where, I mean, you got a bit more excited because Definitely. the idea of, I mean, even the boomer shooter coming back, yep. right? These sort of new classic games, we're already seeing that on a more indie scale where, you know what, I'll pass it over to you because mm. this is far more, um, I mean, up your alley, you play more of these than me. Yeah, so the idea of new classic games can kind of, you know, uh, take a little bit of a sort of turn where you can say new classic games is in new versions of classic games that are just kind of new iterations of classic games. Obviously, they want to be more innovative with classic games. They want to go, okay, we'll see what genres aren't being, you know, really, really loved at the minute, aren't getting the love that they deserve for whatever reason, and we'll, you know, we'll hit them with that new take. We'll hit them with what we've done to this, you know, to split it where we've taken the arena shooter, added an innov innovative enough mechanic, which, you know, in itself is derivative of Portal, because, you mean, you say Halo meets Portal, that's not a new game, but that's a new take on a classic game. And obviously everyone loves it, because no one else is making a game in that realm that's good. So, like, 
taking that idea of a new take on a classic game across is really exciting especially because i look at you know the, the ones obviously split gates of an arena shooter so obviously what you think of gravitates immediately to other shooters and that's where you look at new blood interactive mm. that's where you look at oh, i can't remember the name of the dev but whoever uh, whichever dev is making cruelty squad and you've got these first person shooters that distinctly feel very very old in that they are classic games but new blood interactive specifically with ultra kill with a medieval with dusk are going oh yeah so the new doom didn't really want to be doom that much it was a new game very much it, it felt a little bit doom but it was a new game mm -hmm. So what about the people who like the old games? And they just went and made, you know, three of them. That I mean, obviously, because New, New Blood Interactive is a publisher that's published developers doing their own individual takes. But like Ultra Kill, they called it... Um, the web URL was Devil May Quake because it's Quake, but with the stylish action combat of Devil May Cry, where you've got your combo meter, you've got different elements that amp up. You've got loads of style added to what's a, usually a simple genre. You've got a couple different takes, and they're all like they all review extremely well, and people who play them will love them. Like boomer shooters, with especially with dusk being the more, um, I guess, the more traditional take, is very much holy shit. This is what I imagine when you think of what if this game was made with you know 20, 30 years of iteration and design, and it's just an absolute joy to play, according to everyone who's played it. And then the idea that there's this studio that's got a hundred million dollars to focus exactly on doing that is so unbelievably exciting overall yeah. because there's so many games like that left completely by the wayside even um Kenna bridge of spirits is a good example where that feels distinctly very very old in a sense and it's like nostalgic but to today but designed to today's standard yeah which is just like it feels like something that no one in triple a is actually bothering to do so there's this massive gap in the market for incredible games and now they're going yeah yeah we can take a stab at it and really I guess when, good. I, when I think about this, a bunch of that 100 million is, of course, going to be Splitgate being very successful. Of course. But a lot of that will be based on a big future business plan. Yeah. And I don't know if you attract that sort of investor money for just saying, you know, hey, we're going to make some boomer shooters. <laughs> I'm fairly sure it's going to be... Well, if we think about some things, right? Unreal Tournament. Yeah. There was... Uh, yeah, w w what's going on there? I also remember Quake Champions. Mm-hmm. Not everyone liked that it was Quake Champions with heroes. Yeah. Right? They didn't want Quake mixed with Hero Shooter. Um, so you know, what would they do if they were to take a stab at that? So there's some thoughts there. Um, oh, the game with the skid, the skidding and the skating that High res Tribes Ascend. Yes, Tribes Ascend game that uh, me and Keith played a lot of together, had a lot of fun with. And, uh, you know, what's going on there? So there's a whole bunch of things in the shooter space. That's just a few examples, but yeah. there is a lot of untapped potential. Now, you could say, well, hey, Tribes of Sand didn't exactly do super well over time. Um, but you could also say, I mean, a lot of people could just try to do a Halo clone. Not mm -hmm. that many are going to, uh, you know, basically mm -hmm. do their Halo clone, take the right other mechanic, put it in, and then execute it. And that's basically the thing. It's the execution of Splitgate that is really what makes it what it is. It's not just that there's portals, it's that it feels right in the minutia, which, uh, you know, looks like I played a lot of Halo 3 as a kid and all of that stuff, and it feels right. Splitgate feels right. They they showed their competence at those, you know, almost those, like, intangibles. You know, not yeah. the big broad strokes things. Yeah, that's what I think is really important going forward, overall, is that idea that we're not doing... We're not doing remasters anymore. Because, like, Quake Champions is funny to bring it up because one of the things that I think is a good point to bring home is the Quake remaster by Night Dive, where that was, you know, I don't think it did extremely well, but they just did it perfectly. Mm. And then it was on Xbox Game Pass, like, oh yeah, here's the three, the first three Quake games again. By the way, they run perfectly on modern tech with some modern changes. You know, you've got your widescreen, you've got your 4K, you've got all those things. Just to perfection, which revives, you know, this entire... I imagine there's more people playing Quake now than there were playing Quake Champions. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got this whole big thing of it's now time for us to stop with remasters and there's a proven element of instead of remastering old games, we make old games again, but new. Instead of making new games, one of the good examples is probably moving from God of War as it was to God of War 2018, where that is a very distinct evolution of a genre. That's a new game that fits to new standards. But where's the games that are the old God of War, but taken in the same direction with the same design element yeah. carried forward. 
if you kind of follow the logic. And it's really interesting that that market's opening up as people are talking about classic games more and more and more, and you're seeing more of them come out. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's brilliant. Um, I'd say, by the way, go play Brutal Doom. Just mm. as an aside, go play Brutal <laughs> Doom. Uh, right, okay, so in other things then. They're also playing the meme game a bit. KFC Gaming, trigger an entire fan base with one sentence. Splitgate will have Forge mode before Halo Infinite. Sorry, Halo fans, we love you, but we had to. <laughs> Ouch! Of course, Halo Infinite has uh, delayed Forge mode and a few other things. Um, <laughs> what's your most wanted feature? Everything's on the table. Least like suggestion gets in the game. Like a lot of players know that feeling. Um, you know, just lots. You know, lots. Uh, <laughs> Lots, uh, lots going on. They're doing the social media game pretty well, and they're generally doing a good job of being that community-oriented studio, which basically I think is them wanting to be a, a new and better community Riot Games. And in fairness to Riot Games, like they're often pretty damn good. I like community engagement. I mean, all yeah. the KDA stuff, etc. So that's all. Um, that's all basically is great news for gaming. Now they mm. also did have a talk with um, GamesIndustry.biz talking about um, basically how you go about raising funding, which is overall very interesting. Lots of, you know, the, the do's, the don'ts, the can's, the can'ts. Um, a lot is, you know, the sort of standard stuff that you'll you'll hear, and I guess that's a lot of it. It's like you really just do have to apply the right way of doing things well, and often what happens is people's, you know, egos and giddiness and stuff like that gets in the way of doing things the right way. So, you know, just stuff like, Always be selling. Um, you know, don't silo your conversations with other investors. Don't keep it a secret that you're talking to under or to other investors. You've got to create a buzz because you want a VC or an investor to be like, oh shit, what do the other guys get in first? You, you want to do that. Um, then basic uh, etiquette, you know, knowing not to burn a bridge, but knowing when to walk away. That's an important thing. You always have to be willing to walk away from any negotiation or else it's not a, a, really a negotiation. It's just the other side basically naming a price. Um, other cans and, you know, cans um, where, you know, time is almost always in the favor of the investing party. So you've got to be actively pushing things forward. Um, you know, it's important to be keeping investors updated and excited about the progress Basically, it is all about creating the, the perception that you want. And then, of course, being able to back that up with reality and with a feasible business plan. Well, not business plan. I, I mean, business plans are not really... They're, they're not mega in, in vogue. Um, I mean, I do remember having a bunch tell me, about, oh, no, it's not the business plan. It's the business model canvas that you have to do. And I was just thinking, <laughs> oh, fuck me sideways. This, this is a lot of wank. None of the... <laughs> you know, none of these... None of these things are going to be relevant in a few years. Be yeah. I'd say strategy, not you know, plan in that traditional sense. Um, and yes, once you do get an offer, it's not ethical to share those terms with other investors and to shop the deal around. But you can let other investors know that you have an offer and need to make a decision quickly. Yeah, that, that bit's important. And if you do go around like sharing info and being way too open... You have to remember, investors talk to investors. Publishers talk to other publishers. Publisher scouts talk to other scouts. These industries are smaller than you think when you get up to those, uh, you know, those big echelons. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's it's interesting going through all of that. I'll be able to share our own experiences in fundraising on the game side in a decently, uh, you know, short amount of time. That said, it's just not 100 mil. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's... <laughs> Ain't 100 mil, and I imagine some of that, too, is equity investment, which is not really... It's not really where me and Thomas wanted to go with games. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, more, like, straight-up traditional rather than, like, you know, this sort of big scale. But it's interesting. I've got one or two uh, one or two friends who've also went in a similar direction, and it's, it's just an interesting... It's an interesting thing. And I think one of the big things here, again this is to do with somebody else's company and someone else's info, so I really don't want to talk that much. But one of the things with Splitgate is, you know, you, you prove demand whenever you do what Splitgate did. I mean, this, you know, that joke about, you know, when the investor spend $100 million in Splitgate, but you download it for free. <laughs> and what a, what a great image, you know, what, what great fun. But it is that thing of, is there a way you can prove the base appeal of your product? And um, one really good way to do that, I would say to any aspiring game dev out there, and this is absolutely something that... Uh, I've completely failed at, that we have completely failed at in doing what, what we've been doing. 
Um, one of the ways to succeed is to take an idea and kind of do a game jam with a purpose. Because um, I, I mean, one is literally at a game jam. The other one is basically may, may have well been, you know, a, a game jam that was just ran by an individual for their mm. own sake to do a game jam. And, you know, those are both cases where, um, you know, I can't share other people's numbers, but, you know, big chungus. <laughs> I mean, not 100 million Chungus, but some pretty damn sweet Chungus because if what comes out of your game jam is something that then can do well and can show like that level of base appeal. Um, so that's definitely, you know, something that I would say. With Splitgate, it's, I mean, it's the sort of thing for us, it's a bit harder because we are just, we're making a narrative RPG. So it's not like we can have a 15 second gameplay GIF that's going to set the imagination completely on fire. But I think of, what was he, a Scandinavian fella? Is the guy who made Townscapes. You know oh, the yeah. beautiful, beautiful toy where it like procedurally generates yes, uh, yes. The, like the town and the ocean. That's something where I'm fairly sure he was just messing about, making some cool stuff in his own time. And then it blows up on social media. Then I believe he ends up signing with Raw Fury as a publisher. Mm. And you know, boom. But it's just that thing. He was able to quickly demonstrate the very base appeal of the idea to people. It caught on. And that is then what gets publishers. Instead of you going to them, them coming to you. And generally, you know, you really, really got something in your eye whenever it's sore. But otherwise, uh, you really are, you're onto something whenever those investor types are coming to you. Um, I've seen that just happen a few times. And I think with Splitgate, you're seeing it happen on this incredible scale that is allowing them to literally compete with Halo. Yeah. I mean, what's up with that? <laughs> it just shows the power of indie agility. These motherfuckers are competing with Halo. Look how long it's taking for Microsoft to compete with Halo. I mean, Halo is this big bull and Microsoft are just on top of it trying to rein the thing in because they've been going in this wacky journey lately. And then, yeah, this happens. It's awesome. It's awesome. I think there's a lot of lessons uh, for, for people to, you know, to learn in making community first, player first games that are always just down to that, you know, that base appeal, and that base player fantasy and they fucking nailed it. So yeah. good shit. And I would far rather have it's unfortunate CD Projekt Red that they've had their recent issues. But what people liked was they were an independent studio. They did shit people loved and bam, there you go. Big success. And in a way it's like, yeah, they're a really big scale, but they're, they're our guys. Which obviously then didn't really go that well with Cyberpunk kind of feeling like it was cashing in and that goodwill. Um, but this is another opportunity for a studio like that where it's... It's very much coming up from the players and probably not having those real rough sort of, you know, like, you know, triple A kind of connotations. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, awesome. Yeah, I mean, like, especially the comparison to uh, CDPR is a good one because they've they've pulled in this $100 million. They've obviously, you know, props to them for, you know, going to games industry.biz and going, hey, you know, here's some stuff that we'll make public on how we handle stuff. Here's maybe other people want some help with it. That's really cool and all. But the idea of them going, okay, well, we have identified this part of a market. We have proven that we can capitalize on at least one segment of that market through Splitgate. We know what we're doing. Give us money. We can do it for other genres. And I think that's really overall very, like, it's exciting because unlike CD Projekt Red, where they're like, we'll go make, you know, what are we known for? One of the best RPGs ever. We'll just, you know, top that. We'll just do that again. But Cyberpunk which obviously comes with insane ambitions that, you know, people with cynics seeing the promises of cyberpunk were like, that's not going to happen ever, but people still trusted. But for this, it's a lot more uh, uh, achievable. Yeah. And that's, that's the core thing here. Rather than, you know, starting off being like, Hey, we're going to go make Skyrim with mm. this. They're able to, I mean, I even think about your experience um, in game dev before you joined us, which mm. was, I mean, it was like two startups, technically. Yeah. It was, I think it was basically the same bunch of lads, wasn't it, though? Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, so like the first game, Gravity Stomp, mm -hmm. that you guys did in Transfuser. Which, by the way, I still want to see a build of that someday. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on, let me. But it's that thing with Gravity Stomp, because that was, I believe, a multiplayer arena shooter. Oh, yeah, that was that was entirely going to be a... Multiplayer arena shooter in the vein of Unreal, in the vein of more modern arena stuff, built in UE, but with, uh, you know, almost, you could <laughs> you could almost imagine it being the same idea as Halo meets Portal, but instead it was more like Unreal meets Gravity Weirdness, 
where you know we were trying to design maps where you could be on all six planes of gravity and swap around so you'd have to look everywhere obviously it didn't pan out with the development difficulties and stuff like that but you can still make it now plausibly yeah see it's possibly, that weird thing like, I, yeah. I keep on one thing you know once things are secure here to kind of open mm -hmm. up another you know do, do another studio and yeah. uh focus you know with in my head like with studio a being very focused on uh you know like more serious or rpg stuff hmm. i like i have this burning desire uh and we've, we've both had a few game prototype ideas of yeah. you know things we would want to do if there was a small gameplay focused studio so hmm. anyway anyway um hmm. i guess just interesting the reason i brought that up though is let's just say those development difficulties uh with gravity stomp didn't happen hmm. and you know you had a Maybe a bit rough looking visually, but a really fun, like, core prototype and appeal. Yeah. And then you could put that out there, get that internet clout, get just people being interested, and then bam, all the publishers, mm -hmm. you know, sort of descend upon you. Um, that's a pretty incredible way to make a game that is made so much more possible by the democratization of game development tools and also social media. Because... Yep. Turns out, you see, if you're a, and I, I mean, I've, I've seen this happen multiple times. If you're a scout for a publisher, I mean, you had, of course, me and Thomas going to Gamescom, you know, going onto the, the, the matchmaking system and taking, you know, freaking 30 meetings across a few days, doing all that stuff. You know, hey, hey, here's us. Here's our, you know, uh, we're here with our briefcase. We're going to, bam, we're going to sell you. Here's the idea. Here's the pitch. But really, the more modern way of doing it is, Proving market before that, having the talent scouts, you know, come to you because your game popped off. And I just think here, you see this on an epic scale. And mm. that's why it's so friggin' exciting. So, um, yeah, I'm, I mean, part of, I'm also biased because I really, really love Split <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, I, I think that's pretty much, uh, pretty much it for us. Mm -hmm, yeah. So, um, yeah, right. Enjoy, have fun. Hopefully good shit comes out of this. There'll be more videos on the channel uh, today, tomorrow, uh, yesterday. Just content, content forever. Thanks for watching. Check out the content. See you next time.